All right, last one for you, Greg. You had mentioned C.J. Stroud earlier, and obviously that's who everybody's going to be trying to uh, strive for (laughs) when they choose a quarterback in 10 days in the first round. Um, So my question for you is, was Stroud the unicorn that we all thought he was looking at his tape? I mean, Kurt Warner saying, look at his tape. He was as good as anybody, veteran or rookie, last year. He is, in fact, the real deal? Greg, for yeah, real? Well, he was, I mean, he was my number one quarterback, but I'm not going to sit here and nice. say, Rich, I thought he'd be this good. I right. mean, you know, I mean, you know, I think I'm okay at doing this, but I'm not going to sit here and say I knew the answer to that. Right. Um, but I tell you what, he made some throws. I think it was week two last year. Okay. I'm watching tape because, you know, I watch tape every week, yep. grind away. And he made some throws in that game week two, whoever the opponent was, I can't even remember. And I just, you know, called in the guys uh, in our matchup room here at NFL Films and said, hey, Look at the timing. Look at the anticipation. Look at when he's starting his delivery to throw this ball. He just saw it really, really clearly. Um, and that's a hard thing to teach. And he just saw it really clearly. And the the precise ball location, that's what we sp- I spoke about earlier. Just he's so precise. And I actually thought his delivery was more compact a year ago with the Texans than it was his last year at Ohio State. So, yeah, he was really, really good. Yeah, he, he lost that game to the Colts and starting 0-2. It's the only time he lost consecutive games last year. Um, he was spectacular. Yeah, that's right. It was the Colts because now I can see the play in my mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what does year two look like for him, do you think? What does that possibly well, look it, like here, Greg? It, it, I can't imagine it's, you know, again, let's not look at the number of interceptions. He could throw five more interceptions and have a better year. It, those are just numbers on a page. Right. And you have to look at the plays. Um, but obviously they're going to have three really good receivers because Dell will be back. Um, and uh, Nico Collins is a clear number one right now. Um, yeah. So they're going to have really good receivers. They have a good tight end. Yeah, they just um, added digs too. They just Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They'll have three really good receivers. Right. Um, um, so I, I can't imagine, you know, anything's going to be theoretically worse. And again, now you get into numbers and all that, but, but this kid's a special kid. I've gotten to meet him and know him a little bit. He's a special kid. Um, I, I he's going to be a really, really good player. He is now. Yeah. That's, that's the new, I would think standard on a draft night, a first round draft night. They want the you want the next CJ Stroud. That's what you want. And, and and Rich, you and I both know mm-hmm. the Texans can say whatever they want now. They didn't know he'd be this good. Um, they liked him obviously, or they wouldn't have drafted him. Right. You know. You know. Th- he was so so good. I mean, ridiculously good. Which is why, again, just to circle back to the beginning of the conversation, you 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 put out the caveat of of the so yeah. many different parts of an evaluation, and uh, and then some of it is, is let's see what happens when uh, Toe meets ball in an actual playing season. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free. 